This is a tutorial on how to get the Chroma Camera Drone graphical user interface working in Windows 10. Unfortunately, at this time, the USB drivers for it do not work with Windows 10. So what we have to do is install a virtual machine or a virtualized version of Windows 8 within our Windows 10 to be able to run the software. I am running Windows 10 uh, Pro at this time on the Microsoft Surface Pro 4. All the links to everything you need will be in the description below, so you can try to follow along as I'm doing this. You'll, you'll need to reboot a few times during this process. I'm skipping that. I'm going to show you how, how it is all entirely set up so we can save some time. Um, so the first thing you need to do actually is uninstall everything that you've done so far. Uninstall the Chroma graphical user interface and on top of that uninstall the STM32 virtual COM port driver if you did that. The only way to do that is to download it again, open the file, run it, and uninstall it from there. You don't want to have the, the USB drivers installed already while you're trying to do this or else the system will just get confused. After you've done that, um, head on over to VirtualBox, virtualbox.org. Again, link is in the description, and download VirtualBox 5.0.8 for Windows hosts. Um, while you're while you while you're waiting, also download the uh, VirtualBox extension pack. You're going to need to download and install both of those. It's a pretty quick process, and uh, this will allow you to run a virtualized version of Windows. Once you install it, it'll be like this on your desktop. Pretty pretty quick, easy to. Easy, easy interface looks a little like this when you first get it. Now, um, now the next thing to do is to pick up the virtual machine. You can get this at Microsoft's developer website. Um, so what you want to do is you want to pick your virtual machine. I want to pick Windows 8.1, i.e. 11 on Windows 8.1, and your platform is going to be VirtualBox. See, I already have it set. And then once you do that, they give you the virtual machine to download. It's going to take some time. The virtual machine is about 5 gigabytes in size. So, you know, you might be waiting depending on how slow your internet connection is. But once it downloads, you can extract it. And there it is on the desktop. Double click it. Make sure you don't have Oracle uh, VM VirtualBox open when you click it so it will install it and get it all set up. Okay. Now, before you start the virtual machine, plug in and turn on the Chroma. Go to settings, go to USB. Now in your USB devices list, you should see, you, well, I don't have it on right now, but you should see this device, HH Hobby USB 380QX. What you wanna do is you wanna enable the USB controller, make sure it's enabled, and then click add a new USB filter. Add a filter for the uh, HH Hobby 380QX. Now you want to right click and hit edit filter. Make sure you re remove everything that you see. Your values may be different from mine, but these, these are currently mine and uh, I don't know what other people's look like, but make sure yours looks like this. Just leave vendor ID and product ID and have nothing else. Okay. Now you can go ahead and disconnect the chroma or turn, turn it off. Now you have the filter enabled, we can go ahead and start the VM. Remember, don't, don't connect up the chroma because you want get, to get things all set up first. Okay. This is what the virtual machine looks like. We're kind of just getting it booted up here. Mine is pre-set up. Um, okay. So once you're in your virtual machine, you need to go to um, devices, install, insert guest edition CD image. And then once you do that, this PC, go to, the, go to here, go to this PC and uh, install the VirtualBox guest editions. You need this to enable USB devices. This is going to be another process. Install it, reboot, yada, yada. Once you're done with that and the system comes back up, go to the Chroma website, um, get the USB driver, get everything installed as you normally would, and um, once that's all set and done, hopefully, 
if everything goes according to plan, you should be able to go to the Chroma GUI and get it running. So once that's all done, open the virtual box, set it up, make sure your Chroma is turned on, and then you'll be ready to go. There is one last thing you need to do. Um, you need to save a snapshot of this machine. You can do this by going to machine, take snapshot, and um, that saves a snapshot of it for later because this is an evaluation version of Windows. It only works for 90 days unless you take a snapshot and then you can use that snapshot forever. So that's about it. I'm going to show you what it looks like live now. All right, so we got the Chroma ready to go. We've got the Surface Pro 4, Windows 10, all set up with the virtual box and all the drivers and everything we need. Um, this is important that you do things in this order or it's not going to work. All right, so have the Chroma connected to the computer and to the USB port you plan to use and then start it up. I should go into a blinking mode, looking for the computer. Start VirtualBox. Wait a little bit. Um, you don't have to do this every time, but I like to go to the settings. I like to go to USB, and I like to see that HH Hobby 380QX device has been detected, and it has. It's not listed as an unknown device, which is good. And that means it's okay to start the virtual machine now. So we're going to start the machine up. It'll take a little bit just to start it up, depending on how fast your computer is. All right, and there we go. Now we'll go to the Chroma app. There we go, the Chroma GUI. Pull it up. All right, I'll give it a second, and in just a moment, the Chroma should get connection, and there you go. The Chroma is connected. This might take a little longer to do your first time around, but there you go. The Chroma is connected, and we can see all the statistics, Let's see the calibrations, the GPS information. This is, there you go, all the information you might need. Now, a big thing for everyone is changing the geofence. So here we go. Um, well, well I, mine are maxed out already because I have Windows uh, Windows 8. But let I'm going to just change these to show that they can be. I'm going to click Update. Oop, it, it beeped. I'm going to click Update for the other one. All right, so I'm going to close the app real quick and open it up again. Okay. And let's see if our settings are saved. Oops. Sorry. Okay. And... There they are. I'm going to go ahead and max that out again. Because I don't like limits. Even though I fly responsibly. And there you have it. So, let's just try calibration real quick. Just to just as a test, calibrate the accelerometer. It will probably lose it will probably lose connection to the gravel user interface. But that's okay. And that's it. 
And now the Chrome will reboot. So that's it, guys. I uh, hope this helps you get your Chrome uh, graphical user interface working on Windows 10. Um, if you liked the video, please subscribe. I'm actually going to have some Chroma FPV fun available on the channel soon. I'm going to show you how to set this up. For some really, really good quality FPV that doesn't lag. So definitely check that out. Well, that's it. Um, Service Pro 4, Windows 10, and Chroma. The, if you don't have a Pro 4, you know, you just have regular Windows 10, the process should be very similar. And that's about it. If you have trouble, leave me a leave a, leave a comment below and I'll try to help you out.